dear son, he also has mandated us to do some things. You know, we're not just saved to sit in our chairs or in our comfortable homes, but we have some things that we need to do. He calls us to read his word. He calls us to share his word, to act on his word. given us the Bible as a guide to show us how we ought to conduct ourselves and to learn who our Father is and who His Son is and who His precious Holy Spirit is and who we are in Him. So as Sasha Know, as followers of him. So think about, so if you are in a relationship with him, think about people you're not in a relationship out there. So you don't really have to do like a whole lot for those people, right? You, you don't see them often, you don't really talk to them. Um, but when you're in a relationship,
And they were all filled, that is, diffused throughout their being with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues with the languages as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. So what exactly is that? Jesus Christ 
into our heart. You know, you come up, you accept him, and then you allow the Holy Spirit to take over our soul, right? To diffuse our soul, to lead us and to guide us into all the truth of who God is. Right away, you can see the process is already taking place. That it's already done. When we accept the Holy Spirit, He comes in and He starts to work in our lives, right? I tell you, without the Holy Spirit, I really don't know where I myself would be. I said, when He got me, He didn't get a bargain. I can tell you that. No bargain. I was lost, messed up, you know, looking for love in all the wrong places every day. But God. So I just wanted to give a little shout out to my sister Donna for helping us see that as we yield over our members to the Holy Spirit, he can do what no one else can do. That fusion in the natural way is a reflection of what takes place in the spiritual realm. And this is a free gift from God to us through the death, burial, and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ, and the indwelling, diffusing power of the Holy Spirit in us. And why does he do that? Because he loves us so much. When I was talking to the Lord about the message and what it was he wanted me to share, I thought I was going to be talking about grace, right? I, was, I had these scriptures on grace, and, you know, the Lord was talking to me about his great grace and mercy. Um, but maybe that's the message for another time. I want to talk with you a little more, and I won't be before you long, about the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit is, I mean, he's, he's not new, right? He, he was at creation with the Father, right? So way back in Genesis, in 1.26, it says this. Then God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Make man in our image according to our likeness. And this is, I didn't, you know, put this together, but it's not a physical likeness of God. It is a moral likeness, and it is a spiritual likeness, right? And let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. And throughout the Bible, you know, we can see instances of where the Holy Spirit was at work. Um, the Bible tells us that God sent messages to his people through special messengers, and that the Holy Spirit would come upon the men, and they would speak what God said to the people, right? Um, people like uh, Samuel and Jeremiah and uh, Isaiah, all these prophets and, and priests. So the Holy, Holy Spirit was at work since creation, right? In Chronicles, First Chronicles 12, 18, it says, Then the Holy Spirit came on Amasa, who was chief of the thirty. And he said, being moved by the Holy Spirit, he's talking to David. He says, We are yours, O David, and with you, O son of Jesse. Peace, peace be to you, and peace be to him who helps you. For your God helps you. And then in 2 Peter 1, verse 21, it says this, For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit. 
spirit spoke from God. And there were many prophets in the Old Testament, Joel, Isaiah, I named the few. And these men did not speak on their own accord, but were moved by the Holy Spirit to speak God's message to his people. David in Psalm 5111 realized how vitally important the Holy Spirit was to him, and he pleaded these words. Do not pass me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. So, what is God's purpose for the third person of the Trinity in the lives of his people? I was studying the work of the Holy Spirit and reading about the Pentecost experience, and I found these words. Now, this paragraph, I didn't write this. It's just, I found it. Right? Some Bible, the Bible based um, app or network or whatever. God's purpose, you know, you can, a site. Yeah. A site that's working for <laughs> At Bible.org. <laughs> Bible.org. Thank you. God's purpose is to draw men to Himself and make them like his son, Jesus Christ. To this end, Christ gave himself, he gave his life. This is what God wants to do in our lives. He wants to draw us to himself and make us like his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible clearly tells us that no one comes to the Father except through his son, Jesus Christ. But the process of producing that God likeness is still going on. It has it's still going on today. And it is the primary work of the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Only He can accomplish God's work in us. Okay, that's it. The works of the flesh can never produce the fruit of the Spirit. Please turn to Galatians five seventeen. Have your Bible. Says this, I'm reading from the Amplified. For the sinful nature has its desire, which is opposed to the spirit. And the desire of the spirit opposes the sinful nature. For these two, the sinful nature and the spirit, are in direct opposition to each other, continually in conflict, continually in conflict. So that we as believers, Paul says, sometimes we don't do the things that we want to do. We do those things that we don't want to do. And the Holy Spirit is the lifeline of power in the church, and in the believer. The coming of the Holy Spirit was the beginning of the church, and this is recorded in Ephesians 2.22. Go there. This is a different version. It says, by the Holy Spirit, the body of Christ was formed, and by him, the Holy Spirit it is held together. So uh, Ephesians 2.22 says, In him, and in fellowship with one another, you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. We are the church. Amen. And the Spirit dwells within us. When Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, he had already made a way for us. The Father told us that he would not leave us alone on here on earth. And in John chapter 14, verse 6, 
said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. John chapter 16. We'll start at verse 7. But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you, to be in close fellowship with you. Amen. But what else does the person of the Holy Spirit work in our lives? Turn with me to Galatians 5, verses 18 through 25. I'm reading from the Amplified. All right. But if you are guided and led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, total responsibility, irresponsibility, lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealous, fits of anger, disputes, Dissension, factions that promote heresy, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like these. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience. And patience is not the ability to wait, but how we act while we are waiting. Mm-hmm. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature together with this passion and appetite. If we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, we must also walk by the Spirit with personal integrity, godly character, and moral courage. Our conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit. In John 16, verses 5 through 15, Jesus is talking to his disciples in this passage, right? And um, as he is prepared, he's preparing to leave them and go back, be crucified and buried and resurrected, and then go back to his father and thus complete the work that the father gave him to do here on earth. And it says these things concerning the Holy Spirit, uh, starting at verse 5. But now I am going to him who sent me. 
and none of you ask, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart and taken complete possession of you. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you, to be in close fellowship with you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world about the guilt of sin and the need of a Savior and about righteousness and judgment, about sin and the true nature of it, because they do not believe in me and my message, about righteousness, personal integrity, and godly character, because I am going to my Father, and you will no longer see me, about judgment, the certainty of judgment, because the ruler of this world, Satan, has been judged and condemned. Verse 12, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear to hear them. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you in all the truth, full and complete truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father, the message concerning the Son. And he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. He will glorify and honor me because he, the Holy Spirit, will take from what is mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. And because of this, I said, he, the Spirit, will take from what is mine and reveal it to you. And those were um, Jesus' words to his disciples. That was John. Without the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, in our hearts and in our minds, we can kind of go through life thinking, you know, I'm all right, I'm okay, you know, there's nothing, I'm a good, a good person, right? But being a good person is not the same. You have to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior Amen. and allow the Holy Spirit to do that work in a, that purpose that God sent him, to draw us to him and to make us and mold us into the image of our, our, our father, right? That's his purpose for coming. We should not be blind to the sin that is in us. The enemy of our soul, Satan, the devil, he wants us to believe that we are okay. He does not want us to see who we really are. He wants to keep us believing that there is nothing wrong with us. And I'm going to close with these scriptures. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. God, he, he's not a complicated father. The Bible says even a fool can understand a, a child, you know. So God has, has chosen to use preaching, the simple preaching method to reach his people, you know, to, to give his word that it can convict and convince people to come to him follow him. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 21. 
For since the world, through all its earthly wisdom, failed to recognize God, God in his wisdom was well pleased through the foolishness, because of the foolishness, this is called letter to the Corinthians. He was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached regarding salvation to save those who believe in Christ and welcome him as their Savior. This is how we get saved, through the power of the Word of God, through preaching, right? Through preaching, hearing the Word. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural, unbelieving man does not accept the things, the teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness, absurd and illogical to him. And he is incapable of understanding them because they are spiritually discerned and appreciated. That's why we need the Holy Spirit, the power to help us understand the Word of God and apply the Word of God in our lives. We hear the word of God and we are convicted in our hearts through the message. But and verse 15 says, but the spiritual man, the spiritually mature Christian, judges all things. He questions, examines, and applies what the spirit reveals. So that's my message on the Holy Spirit. I hope you are able to get something about the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And without the Holy Spirit, we can't even come to the Father because it's because it is the Holy Spirit that draws us to Him. And it is the Holy Spirit that works.